And away we go. Let's move on to 2-6 here. Yeah. So in 2-6, I believe I'm up picking for Jordan's team. Yeah. Which it's a little barren over there, especially in the receiver room. Let's see who his starting receivers are. So he has DeAndre Hopkins, which that's two receivers. So good for him. (laughs) And then he's got Jordy Nelson, who... Had been awesome. Had been awesome, and there's a good chance he returns to being at least start, startable weekly this okay. year, possibly. Some people say no. Some people say yes. But outside of that, it's Kenny Britt and it's Jordan Matthews are basically the only two other startable guys. Those guys are on the same team. I like Jordan Matthews a whole lot, mm-hmm. and I think you know you could get some good production from Jordan Matthews, but you just don't know. It's the Patriots. they got a lot of parts and pieces. Exactly. He's got to just get healthy. I mean, that's exactly. the same right. thing for Jordan him. Matthews is the one guy out there that, like, the – very one guy out there where if you see him on the field and he's playing and he looks healthy, his value his value could shoot straight sky right. high. But right now he we haven't seen him healthy in a while and, and basically like dead to rights said. at this point. So Cut. there's there's a barren wasteland of receivers here that needs that he needs to be addressed. I want to take Gasecki. I like Gasecki as a player, um, and maybe I should have just went and taken him and just punted on this season for this team even though he does have Le'Veon Bell and Hopkins so you're always in it but he's got five quarterbacks for some reason in a one quarterback league and they're all good quarterbacks I don't except for Deshaun Kaiser he's got Wentz Bradford who will get some starts he's got Garoppolo he's got Cam Newton but I mean yeah Jimmy G in a one Carson. quarterback league unless somebody's guys get hurt in the middle of the season they're chasing playoffs like me Jimmy not G that accessible you don't nobody wants him because you have one they don't want to give you anything good right for in a 12 team one quarterback league it is absolutely unnecessary to have Jimmy G Carson Wentz and Cam Newton obviously Carson Wentz got hurt last year Jimmy G was a backup to start the season that's a, that's a tricky dicey situation but at this point coming into the year this man needs to trade a quarterback if he can get anything for it. Right. And in your, when you're in that position, nobody's going to give you anything for – obviously, he's got five quarterbacks, and Kaiser and Bradford could be cut. Somebody might give you something for Cam Newton because he's a top five quarterback when he's healthy. Jimmy G's a beast. He's Jimmy yeah, G I mean, and you, Jimmy G and Carson Wentz is the guy. Like you need to try to trade one of those guys and take advantage of like the just fandom. You got to try to the trade whichever Sharks one and whoever fandom. will give you the most for yeah. any of them. Yeah. So, okay. But he's fair an enough. Eagles fan, so there's no way he's trading Wentz. Okay. Fair enough. He'll give up Jimmy G. Um, so I, I I wanted to take Kaseki. I originally pretty much took Kaseki, and then I looked at this team and I was like, man, I really need to take a shot at wide receiver here. So I went with Dante Pettis. Um, the Niners obviously moved up a ton of spots to draft Dante Pettis. Came out of nowhere in that early second round. Ridiculously crazy. And you got to like the draft capital. And I love the 49ers system. And I love the 49ers quarterback. And I love what they're doing all and over the place. And you're a 49ers fan. I'm a Niners fan. But it has nothing to do with this pick. I really don't even like Dante Pettis that much. Um, I, whose spot does he take first and foremost when we start talking about Pettis? Like, is he starting for Garcon? No way. Like, Garcon's a wily veteran. Unless he's hurt and not going to play anymore, Garcon's out on this field. Sure. Marquise Goodwin played fantastic last year. and He's got a role. Got a role and an integral part of what he does. And then Trent Taylor's your slot guy. And I love Trent Taylor. I think Trent Taylor's going to be a strong player for Jimmy G. He's perfect for what Jimmy G wants to do. Jimmy G's an intermediate middle of the field kind of thrower well that's i think that's what people are going to say to cut you to cut you right off on that trent taylor slot i think people are going to say why isn't pettis coming in here and taking that spot maybe i I just don't see him taking just coming in here and just having full autonomy of the the slot like i just (laughs) i just don't see it happening i think trent taylor is built and bred for that spot i could tell you like everyone's like well they took the 49ers moved up to draft this guy. They took him in the second round. They must love him. They need. A, they obviously need wide receivers in, in 49er land. And I think this guy may have to sit back and enjoy his ride this year. And then maybe next year or, or somewhere along those lines, he starts to slot. I'm not saying that he's not going to play this year. He's going to play a fine amount. Well, he's a versatile guy. I mean, when you right. watch the when you watch some of the game, uh, the draft breakdown games in in some of them it's really annoying they don't highlight where he is right and it's hard to find him you got to pause it and be like where's pettis because he moves every single play he's in a different place on the field so he he's all over he's that was probably one of his best attributes um he's He's a a, very usable piece for them and i like like i said i like the niners offense i like the way they scheme i just don't know whose role he's taking over to come in and like any of those other guys that we just talked about i know where they're going on i know where they're starting on their team i just don't know where pettis is starting garcon is is on the wrong side of 30 sure sure that's what i'm saying and he's coming off of a neck injury right so it's not like for sure we don't know that he's back and and gonna be super healthy i I, if he is he's awesome and i love pierre but i mean he could 
He, he could not healthy, be right. Exactly. That, that neck issue is a 31 or 2-year-old dude. Well, just like you said about finding Pettis on the screen when you're watching him and he moves everywhere. Like I said, to plays that, right into what Kyle Shanahan wants to do. It's his world Steelers, we're living in it, man. The Steelers, gonna, didn't, the Steelers didn't take James Washington in the second round without knowing that he lined up in the right-hand side of the field every single play. And Kyle Shanahan doesn't trade up into the second round to take this guy, Pettis, without knowing that he's a you know career leader in kick returns and – that he moves all over the place. Well, we're going to stop. We're going we're to stop traffic right there. I know. I know. But let me to, to finish. Just like Jay Wayne jumped in when I said that. Mike, uh, Kyle Shanahan, his dad's Mike. Kyle Shanahan is a chess piece master, and he just drafted a chess piece. So if and I said that I wasn't fa- a fan of Pettis in our pre-draft breakdown because I wasn't sure what he would do for an NFL team, and it's the same exact. It's just like. You know, everybody, yeah, McKinnon did play well last year, and he really played well in a couple of games. But then all of a sudden, Kyle Shanahan wants him, and he's a second, th- he's a third round dynasty startup pick, right? So if Kyle Shanahan likes him, I like him too. If Kyle Shanahan likes Pettis, I like Pettis. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying that I don't like Pettis to be the chess piece that Kyle, I just don't know where he's fitting in right away. And he's a rookie receiver, just for all, we just had to hear you say over and over again about rookie receivers. Like, I don't know whose spot he's taking. All those other guys, I know whose spot they're taking, where they're playing on the field. I'll tell you why the 49ers took this guy. I'll tell you why they traded up to take this guy. It's not because, yeah, he's a, he's a good chess piece and he's versatile. That, that goes into it, and they need a receiver. Sure. But the kickoff rule has just changed in the NFL. So the way the kickoff goes and the way it's set up, like you're not allowed to do the things that you were doing before. Like nobody can start running before the ball's kicked on the kicking side of the ball. Yep. Everyone has to be spread out. You can't load up guys in one particular part of the field. Everyone's spread out for the kicking team. I don't. You can go watch videos of how this is going to set up. But for the kicking team, pretty much everybody is like 15 yards off the ball, and they can't really start moving until somebody on the offensive side of the ball either catches the ball or I think it's 15 yards down the field. Not 100% sure how it goes. And there can only be three guys back past that 15-yard um, mark for the receiving team. There can only be three guys back there. And there can be no wedges. There can be no holding hands with two guys and trying to block for your guy. There's none of that. It's basically setting up to be a punt return to try to get collisions down and they're doing everything they can to keep this as an integral part of the game because it is an integral part of the game. It's very unsafe and they're trying to make it safer. Um, and But a lot of guys, like there's a ton of players in the league that make their bread and butter and get their chances and you would have never found out about them if they didn't get to play special teams. Right. And it's a big part of the game. It's a, you know, every time you hear a coach talk about it, it's about the three phases. Yes. Special teams is one of those phases. You have to win it, but the good special teams teams are typically good all-around football teams. They get a W. Right. Ravens, so Kyle Shanahan and this guy see this coming, and Dante Pettis and Christian Kirk are the two top kick, kick returners, returners and punt returners in the nation, bar none. Probably Pettis being the best. Yeah, um, definitely. So basically what the 49ers... I've read a bunch of stuff about this, and basically what the 49ers were saying was that where they're trying to set the bar and get an edge on everybody because we just drafted the best guy who's going to give us a chance to flip fields and score points off of kick returns and punt returns. Yeah. So they're trying to get ahead of the league, and they're saying that this could be a trend-setting move by them where p- people are moving up and because it's a big, just like I said, it's three parts of the game. Exactly. you got to win at all three parts of the game. you got to take advantage of the rules. Guess what happened in the offseason when you didn't even, you couldn't, you were like, oh, well, what happened over there at Patriots? Why are they taking Cordero Patterson? Exactly. I can tell you why. That's Because when, Cordero Patterson is one of the best returners in the league. I was just and they about were to miles ahead of everybody yep. else. I was just about to say that. When Casey broke all this stuff down to me why about the Why do you think the, the Cowboys just picked up Tavon Austin? Uh, about, this, about this rule change, and Casey was explaining all this stuff to me that he just told you guys. He told me the same thing, just like he just told you. He was teaching me about this. And that's that's the first thing out of my mouth. I was like, oh my God, that's why the Patriots went and got Cordero Patterson. Right. He was like, exactly, because Shanahan's going to be ahead of the curve and nobody's slipping anything past Belichick. No shot. Had, first thing that happened in, in the offseason was the Patriots got, got Cordero cool. Patterson. First thing that happened. So and when, like, when you look at it, you're like, oh, cool, the Patriots just got one more piece to be a kick returner. Well, now the kick return game has changed. Yes. And Cordero Patterson is a great piece for them. Yeah. And yeah. now Tavon Austin on the Cowboys. You're going to see another it. piece that could be a nice return piece for the Cowboys. Like, I'm not saying that the 49ers just specifically only took him for that reason, but I've read a ton of places, a ton of articles from a ton of different places with a ton of credible sources saying that this is the a big reason why they decided to trade up and go after and target him 
as that receiver that they were going after. Yes, he's a chess piece for Kyle Shanahan, and I love that. This, that, that goes in. That's a part of the chess piece, though. And when, if you could tell right. any coach in the league that he can win a field position battle with a second round pick, he'll do it and have the most electric guy back there with the potential to score. That's six what points. I'm saying. That's your second. So when it because it, when it happened and Pettis goes off the board in front of some you know some higher touted wide receivers, I'm just couldn't wrap my head around it i was slow to this kick rule pettis was the fourth wide receiver off that's the board. what i'm saying I, I didn't put all this together and then when casey put it all together for me it's just like a light bulb like sure pettis could get out there and catch some balls from jimmy g if that's what kyle wants him to do but it's more than obvious that kyle's like hey this is how we roll watch we're ahead of the curve we're going to do this right right and, and i got a piece that is going to be very usable i just don't know where it fits in this year as far as a receiver i'm sure he's going to get on the field he's going to get his chances and just like we like to talk about with special teams players you're getting a chance to be on the field showcase your talents and earn more reps sure right um so i'm not hating on dante pettis by any means he's my least favorite receiver from a receiver standpoint and if you know you want to talk about pettis and the return yardage and stuff like you gotta you gotta love christian kirk even more in anything that offers a return yardage right uh, kind of game here so I'm not meaning to hate on Dante Pettis at all and the chess piece is a is a, is a good idea I just no, I don't I, I mean the versatility plays into right. it no, for abso- sure. no absolutely I'm, I'm, and, but but on top of that I mean he's, he's, he's a fluid route runner we gave him a ton of credit for for little wasted movement and his and he's got pretty decent hands and then we said like those are good building blocks to build upon right and then on top of that he does like the little things he blocks his ass off yeah so there's a lot of reasons why I could see that they'd be appealed Right, he would be appealing to take, Plus especially they're, they're out west. He's a West Coast guy. They, they, you know, I, it, I get to watch him more. Probably yeah. plays into some. He's over in Washington. They're in San Francisco. It's a kind of you know Pacific Northwest kind of deal over Gotta there. You see, see him a lot. You more. see a lot more, and you yep. can talk. He's more accessible. You can talk to people who know. Right. All, right. Obviously, you're in the NFL, so you can talk to whoever the hell you want. The same yeah. time Just zone saying. helps. You know. Right. You know, I can call this dude in the morning, and he's he's not asleep still. So that's <laughs> I'm taking Pettis for this guy. Maybe he doesn't help him out this year per se and i don't i don't wouldn't feel co- like just like we talked about him when we we're ra- actually breaking him down i don't know where the fantasy points if he's going to be able to get for fantasy points right. for your team and you're comfortable playing him this year there's not I think much he's better develop, placed in san fran right some i think he's going to sit 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 back and re- enjoy his learning curve and maybe there's less of a learning curve for this type of guy which we like these high and character he, guys and he comes from a professional family his right. brother played in the league for a while his dad is a professional athlete like he's he's got yeah, he knows how pedigree. to agree yeah he, For sure. he knows how to be a professional athlete. All right. Well, that's why I took Dante Pettis there. Again, need on this team. Kind of the last. I could Obviously, you, Traquan Smith would be like the only other guy I'd be interested in kind of taking and putting a guy on your team that would be ready to play. Uh, but I'm not taking Traquan Smith over Dante Pettis. Somebody likes Dante definitely Pettis not way more than, than definitely and, not and definitely Gusecki. not over Gusecki. Yeah. I mean, in actuality, I probably should have taken Gasecki, but when you look at the receivers, it's barren over there. So you I'm just trying wanted to, to help get you out. wanted to get your your kickoff spiel into the show tonight. I would have got it somewhere. I would have got it in the after show. Or <laughs> he wanted his kickoff spiel in the we show. I just in. saw I saw a need, and Gasecki's not. They, he asked Charles Clay and Kyle Rudolph, so it's not necessarily a glaring need. It's non non premium. Gasecki would be a nice home run cut, and you could just wait until next year, which maybe you're waiting for next year for Pettis anyway. Yeah, I anyway, wouldn't say even drafting any, any wide receiver in the second round is make or break on whether or not you're passing on the season or not. I would probably I – I don't have a problem with taking Dante Pettis because Pettis could come out and be a monster. for If Kyle Shanahan wants him to catch 100 balls, he's catching 100 balls. You better believe that. So I don't have a problem with it. I probably would have taken Gasecki as well yeah, just from the name that's cachet. Fair. That's fair. Just from the lack of playmakers over in – uh, the Dolphins over in the Dolphins and they're cl- kind of clear to me what they're looking to do they're looking yeah. to have a pass catching slot kind of move around versatile piece in, in Gusecki and it's tough for the freshman tight ends to come in and right really do work spoiled. but we you got could spoiled with Hunter Henry you and could Evan get Ingram. some touchdowns out of him much like a Hunter Henry and, True. and, and some catches so yeah, and Gase is very excited about him that's very appealing and Gusecki's gonna go you off the board are, any second here but ready to that, wrap it up yeah we just gave you picks one through six of the second two round two through six yeah. oh I said one through six of the Two second through six. round. Well, yeah, one through six of the second round. That plays. You didn't let me finish. Oh, well, you're done. That plays. I'm like your wife. <laughs> she always lets you me didn't finish. Let me finish. Bah. You don't let her finish. It's a Hardly race. ever. All right. Speaking of finishing, let's get We're out of here. Pretty competitive, so it's let's. Get- <laughs> hey, he's a really fast run. Well, she's more about the long game. She's you a had long as sp- much time as I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we paper rock scissor for it? Let's get out of here. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, if, if you liked what you heard today, 
Go on iTunes, give us a five-star review. Huge shout-out to anybody that's already done that. We see the numbers going up every week. Thank you so much. If you haven't taken the time to do it, please go over there. Just tap the little five stars. Take you two seconds, and it would really help us out. We really appreciate it. If if you're on YouTube, definitely hit subscribe. Um, And if, if if you haven't gone to our YouTube page, go check it out. You can... We're building a nice little repertoire of players. You can search on YouTube for them and find our, our, our breakdowns and get a more granular search. Yeah. Um, t- hit subscribe on any of your other platforms of choice, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Let me, and let me just jump in here real quick on that, Jay Wayne. If right now, when, if you pull up iTunes and you search Dynasty Fantasy Football and you're in, under iTunes, we pop up first. And that's because of the listeners. That's because of the downloads. That's because of the five-star reviews. And we really, really appreciate it. And if anybody that's listening to this right now hasn't done that, please do that. And if you are listening to this, maybe it's your first time and you don't know why in the world we just talked for an hour and 45 minutes on six draft picks. <laughs> yeah, please don't, don't go give us a, a, a crappy review because we went two hours on six draft picks. We do that for your pleasure. Right. Yeah. And we're about to give you our email address. Send us some hate mail. Hit us up on Twitter. Don't don't go one star reviewing us because because well, let's talk it out. <laughs> let's talk it out. Let's talk it out. Let's get that some let's peer get that mediation. Up to a yeah. four. If, if works, your worst you know? review is that it's too long, right? Come That's, on, man. we're efforting. We're yeah. efforting. If you don't like trying that, to talk come some on, things out, man, let's talk it out. Yeah. All right. You can listen in multiple segments. I promise. You don't yeah, you, to it all you don't have to listen to it all the way through. You can come back tomorrow. We'll be right there for your pleasure. Wait, no one queued yet. up and ready to play. All right. Well, let's get out of here. Till next time. You've been listening to the FF Dynasties. Married to the game.